Wham bam, thank you, ma'am. And let's get my boy Diesel in the live. Diesel down low. All right. About to get it cracking on some social anxiety with uh, someone we actually just had on the podcast recently. His name is Diesel. Well, that's his nickname. Benjamin Don Lowe. He's an entrepreneur. He's a motivational speaker, upcoming author. Here he is. Diesel, what's up? What's that, big dog? <laughs> Nothing much, man. Good to talk to you again. Yeah, it's a pleasure. So what's been going on? What's What's been good for you today? <laughs> uh, man, just working. Working on a business, working at school, you know, doing all that type of stuff. Awesome, man. Awesome. So uh, I was just kind of giving a really short introduction to people that were in here before you came in. So we just had you on the podcast last week. You know, we talked kind of general about, you know, mental health and uh, and all that. I want to ask you a little bit more specifically. Obviously, I do a lot of stuff with social anxiety, as you can probably tell in my name. Um, <laughs> have you ever experienced any sort of social anxiety at all? Oh. Uh when you say sh social, are you saying like from social media? Are you saying like from friends? Can you give me like a de definition? Yeah, yeah. so I'll give you the kind of the general definition. So basically, anytime you've ever been like in a social environment around other people where you feel like others are negatively judging you? Uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, I played basketball in my life and a lot of people you know, when you play playing basketball, a lot of fans just say whatever they want to say. Sometimes they don't have respect, you know, for the athletes. They just, you know, say what they want to say. So a lot of people might not like you on a court and they're booing you and stuff like that. I didn't feel anxiety. I felt like I loved it, you know. But some other people I've known, you know, dealt with that type of anxiety. They can't play in front of people because it's pressure. You know, it's a lot of things like coming at them, a lot of fans booing at them. I know that affects a lot of athletes. But me personally, I love, no. Go ahead. But me personally, I love like when people like root against me and stuff like that, or say you can't do it, uh, because that that takes me to another level. That makes me want to prove not only to you but to myself that your negative energy doesn't affect my energy. So, but I have had situations where I felt like anxiety, you know, being in places that I wasn't you know familiar with, maybe. If that's you know, if that's the answer for you. Yeah. So how how have you handled those moments? So you told me how you did on the basketball court. You kind of turned that into like your fuel, which you know you hear from lots of the great sports players. That's what they do. How do how have you handled other moments where you're like you know, whatever in a business meeting, whatever, and you're feeling like people may be having perceived negative judgments about you, even if it's not true. You just feel that way. Uh, I take a breath, you know, I just take a breath, you know, like, just take a breath, calm down. Learned that doing yoga and meditation, you know, your breath and I do Tai Chi. So I just take, I just take the moments if I do feel that way and I just take a breath, you know, just everything's going to be okay. You know what I'm saying? So those, those are ways I would tell other people if they have those type of situations, just take a breath and breathing and, you know, just releasing, you know, whatever you're feeling. So you do, you do Tai Chi. I've only heard, I heard of Tai Chi not that long ago and it's from Ricky Williams. I heard that he does Tai Chi, but I have no idea what that is. What is Tai Chi? Uh, it's, you know, moving with the energy in your body. I'm not an expert by the way, but I'm just showing <laughs> you know, like. Put you on the uh, spot. You know what I mean? I, I just know a little bit like that. I'm just in the basics of it. Uh, but it helps me with breathing. It helps me with motioning. It helps me with, you know, uh, feeling energy and feeling energy in the in the environment. Because a lot of people don't realize that stuff is real. Uh, they think that, you know, a lot of people don't understand that energy is really real. Uh, but when you go outside, especially you can feel the sun and you can feel, you know, the weather and all that. When you run outside, that's energy. You're pushing out energy when you're running. You're pushing out energy when you're doing push-ups. When you're in the gym pushing the weights up, that's energy. 
you know, and the same thing with Tai Chi, you know, I feel like, you know, it's a calmness to it and a flowing of energy. So that's like, that what helps me with, you know, meditation, it helps with yoga. I'm really big into yoga and meditation. And when I think of meditation, I just think that's praying and calming the mind. I don't, you know, make a big deal out of that, but I'm really into like yoga though. And yoga helps with, you know, the breathing and the stretching and all that. Yeah, definitely. I, I'm a big uh, yoga advocate myself, although I will be honest, I would like to put more time into it. So I, 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 find I go to the I go to the gym, you know, four or five days a week. But then, you know, I don't do yoga at the gym. So if I ever do yoga, it's at my house. And yeah, I definitely need to find a way to get that in because there's something about it. Um, it. It was explained to me. I don't know if you've ever heard of like the P90X workout series. Yeah. So that was the first time I was ever introduced to yoga and how Tony Horton explained it was like, it's like a, what was it? It's like a, it's like a massage of your central nervous system, like all the different balance postures and stuff that you do. And you can just feel it. You're, you're, you're like, whatever your nervous system, I guess, is just going like, ring -a -ding -a -ding, you know, like back and forth. Like it really is just like a massage and you just like feel so good after doing it. Exactly. Only, only reason I do it, man, uh, or my brother is uh, for stretching, for calmness, for uh, I want to stretch it out. Like one of my teammates, uh, he saw me, like my high school teammate, he saw me a couple months ago. Uh, when I came back home, I was living in New York. When I came back home, I went to go visit him. He's like, Ben, did you get taller? Like, I noticed that you're taller now. And I was thinking like, that's what yoga does, it stretches you. And he probably noticed that I've been like stretched you know, my body's been stretched and lengthened. And a lot of people don't understand that. That's what yoga does is it helps the strength and lengthen the muscles too. You know, you don't always want to just go to the gym and just do, you know, weights and all that. And weights are fine. I love lifting weights, but I like to be stretchier and I like to be long and lengthy and athletic. And I feel like that's a new wave of where fitness is going to go soon because a lot of people are starting to see that just weightlifting isn't the way you know, running and being an athlete and doing yoga, that all comes and helps anxiety. You know, when you're taking your mind off of like what you're doing, like after this conversation, I might do a couple of uh, homework assignments for my doctorate program and a couple of little worksheets, and then I'm going to run for about an hour or so. So, you know, that's my way of like, you know, appreciate my day at the end of the day. So that helps with anxiety as well. Uh, absolutely. I, w I want to get back into like you're talking about energy and, you know, not even from the, the Tai Chi aspect of it, because I know that's well, that's over my head, honestly, and probably some other people are not really familiar with it. But um, how can we. So I feel like a lot of times with like dealing with and, and going about the day, you know, facing anxiety that we may we may come up against or social anxiety, whatever it may be. I feel like a, a lot of times we can be proactive with all that. And if we can like create good energy, if we can put our, you know, our mindset and our mental health at an optimal, optimal spot to begin with the day, I'm a huge, huge <laughs> advocate of morning routines for this purpose. I'm way more into being proactive and not having to like, not, not having to worry, but having to face anxiety and the intensity of anxiety much, 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 much less than like just letting it all come. And when it comes trying to figure out how to deal with it, then right. what are some things that you do to, you know, but maybe you should probably explain some of them, but some things to keep that calm mind, um, you know, stuff that you may do in the morning to, so you kind of prevent that stuff from coming up as easily, I guess. Um, Honestly, brother, every day I wake up, I say gratitude. Thank you, you know, God, for waking me up. Give me another breath. You know, that's number one. Um, usually I have uh, meetings and all that stuff and places I need to be. Um, so I know that's coming on my way. So first thing I do is usually I wipe my face, <laughs> uh, like with a towel, you know, just, you know, waking up in the morning, uh, brushing my teeth. I put the... Um, the stove on for my oatmeal, like have it boiled, get the water ready, and then I go right into meditation and yoga every day. 
right off the bat. That's why every day I do that exactly. Like when I moved back home, it switched. Because when I lived in New York, I had roommates. So like I had to like, I couldn't do everything I wanted to do at the time. But uh, now, like now I just, like, like I said, I do what I just told you. And then I go right into yoga and meditation every day. And then like, then I go onto my day and then I do scripting middle of the day. Usually early afternoon, I do like a little scripting thing. And uh, I'm incorporating weights. Like I'm about to start working out again. So I, my schedule is going to switch again. And I got to figure out a way to like study because I got doctor school. Like the challenges like that I have is like, I always incorporate something new into my schedule. And then I got to work still. So I might have to go on set or go do a COVID test or go to costume and fitting or I might have a meeting like this. Like, so you got to adjust your schedule all the time. So adjustment. I don't have the same schedule every day, except for that morning time. Right. Yeah. 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 I hear what you're saying there. It's like the one constant and then you got to just kind of be flexible with everything else. But when it comes to the morning time, how do you keep yourself motivated to do that every single morning? I mean, even sometimes in the past, like I know if I get up and I do my morning routine, I feel better that day. I will feel so much better than if I don't do it. But sometimes in the past, I've had that thought of like, you know, I know this, but I still don't want to do it. I don't feel like doing it. So I, I want to I want to know from you, like, how well, how's that ever happened? I'm sure it has from time to time. And how do you deal with that mentally? Oh, man, that's a good question. Um, honestly, I just stay focused in the moment. I stay present in the moment. Uh, you got to make sure that you're disciplined. And it's not easy being disciplined, you know, at the level you are and I am. Because, uh, like I said, life is all constantly giving you feedback constantly aligning, changing, shifting. Uh, just like people writing in the comments right now, uh, their their opinions affect the conversation we're having. And they're saying great, you know, things too as well. So that's what I'm talking about. Like life always gives you changes and shiftment. You ever watched The Maze Runner? No, I haven't. Oh man, you're missing out. It's a, it's a movie called The Maze Runner. Watch that movie. And then you'll see like how the maze always moving. And that's how life is moving. Life always moves and adjusts. So to stay motivated is you got to focus on what the goal is. The goal, so say for you, the goal is to be, man, Kyle's goal is to be the one of the greatest anxiety coaches, right, or coaches for personal development. So you set that goal, right, and then that's all you see. Like that's all your life is going to start resembling. And then you'll notice like some other people that might come in your life, they'll be like, hey, I want you to go and – jump off of uh, the, go jump in the ledges or some, go jump in the river or some. You're like, bro, that's not what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to do the coaching thing. So you got to avoid that. You know, you always got to stay constant to your goal. Whatever the goal is, you have to stay on that goal and your life becomes that. And you start thinking about it and you start becoming that. You always stay, in, you know, focus on that. So my goal every day is to become the best at what I'm trying to become the best at. And so I don't want to see nothing else that's not going to help me get to that goal. So if it's something like out there that's not going to get me to that goal, I'm not trying to hear about it, bro. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I think, and we talked about this in the podcast a little bit, taking baby steps to that goal as well. Not trying to just jump straight to that. It's like, okay, what what can I do today? What is What are three things? What is one thing I can do today to get a step closer? What's what's one thing I can get done this week to get a, a step closer? I mean, me personally, I do. I have daily, weekly, monthly, and quarterly goals, and those all align with like my main mission to have one million teens go from socially anxious to socially confident. So, I mean, all my stuff is all aligned with that, and so that that's what really helps me just like really stay on task, stay in sync of what I'm doing, and that way I don't find myself being like getting up and being like, uh, you know, I don't, I don't know what I'm, what I'm doing today or I don't feel like doing it because I know what the mission is. And then I got my baby steps that I'm working on right now to that mission. Exactly. exactly. So speaking of, speaking of baby steps, um, <clears throat> I didn't get to ask you too much about this uh, on the podcast. 
So I, I, I don't know if I told you my three-step process that I help people through, but it's basically shower yourself with self-love, find a baby step on comfortable challenge, and then reward your efforts, not your results. So on right. the, the baby step on comfortable challenge thing, and uh, I want to know what do you do to practice this, going outside your comfort zone? What are, what are some little things you have done to go outside your comfort zone to continue to grow every single day? Going to grad school again. Ooh. You know, I'm in my doctor yeah. now, you know, so that's a challenge with itself. Like, I'm, I'm used to waking up doing whatever I want to do. Now I have assignments due this day, this day, that day. And I'm like, okay, God, like, how do I shift it together? You know what I mean? So that's something I'm working with now, like, adding things into my life. Like I told you, like, having meetings with you, helping you out now and whatever we're doing with you, like, or a collaboration we may have, that takes time to develop. Like, we talked about uh, relationships and connections. We talked about that on the show, right? Um, so it's just like I said, bro, you just have to focus, like, on the goal. And you got to focus that goal is crispy. And your schedule is going to change. Things are going to be added into it. Things are going to change. Some things are going to be removed. And it's about that end goal. Whatever that end goal is for you. Like I said, my goal is to inspire the entire world. So my goal is to inspire people through multiple languages. So I have to learn multiple languages to do that. I have to be able to take those classes or whatever and all the studying I have to do. A lot of people think it's easy to get up and study every day and be disciplined to study and to research and to make water, to make shoes, to do podcasts, to collaborate and to make content. That stuff comes with practice and research. And a lot of people are like, why are you so expensive or whatever? Well, it's all the research that I'm giving you, you know? So you just got to be, like I said, on that goal. It all comes to that end goal, bro. Yeah, I, I like that. Uh, and you saying you're getting your doctorate was, you know, that uncomfortable challenge for you. And I can imagine like going out and, you know, getting a, getting a doctorate. I mean, I have a, I have a bachelor's, but that's just like another unknown step, right? You know, you're getting back into school, like not, not sure what, what's about to happen. You, you probably had a lot of unknown of like, okay, like you've been talking about this whole time. Like I got to switch up my whole schedule all the time, which, you know, it isn't the easiest thing to do. You really got to maneuver. Plus, you have, what was you have a two-year-old, one-year-old? Two-year-old. <laughs> All right. So, so, I'm sure that doesn't make it any easier. I can relate. It don't. You already know. <laughs> you already know how it is. Yeah, absolutely. I can hear my kids downstairs right now whizzing by on the hoverboard. <laughs> yeah, probably watching uh, Baby Shark or Barney. I don't know what your kids watch, but mine's watch Barney. <laughs> um, I've never watched Barney, but yeah, a plethora of other shows. I, I don't watch too much of them, honestly. Some of them are okay, but... <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So I want to hear about, have you started doing the LinkedIn challenge that I told you about? Oh, my man, yes. I already implemented <laughs> I already implemented and and all, like and it's like multiple businesses I'm doing it for. So oh, okay, so how, get, how's it going? I, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. I'm gonna tell you right now. I took what you did, mm. you know, put my to it, and I'm doing it for like all the businesses I'm doing now. So my every business that I have is doing this implement implement and what you did, what you gave me, and like I'm targeting different people now, you know, different industries, different things that we do. Uh, it's been working. It's been working. A lot of people are like, oh yeah, that's pretty cool. I have to make a calendar, a calendar. What is it, calendar? -y? I don't know the name of it. Calendly, yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's weird to say. But yeah, for uh, for those watching and don't know uh, what we're talking about, uh, I was telling uh, Diesel here that I do this thing every single day where I connect with 10 people on LinkedIn and going back to efforts over results, I focus on just connecting with 10 people or at least attempting con to connect because, you know, they have to accept and mm -hmm. I can't control whether they do that or not. And then of the people who accept, I try to do a 15 minute, super, super short, 
15 minute chat about mental health. Cause I mean, that's all the people that I connect with is just around, you know, the space that I deal in. And so I just try to have a 15 minute connection. I did this for, well, for several reasons, but one of them was because it's slightly uncomfortable for me and just going out and just having these random you know, conversation, not random conversations, but conversations with random people with strangers from, you know, I talked to a guy from Australia a couple of weeks ago and, you know, I've talked to a few other people in the States and have lots of people scheduled to talk to for just 15 minutes. And it's, it's been awesome. And honestly, just from a, from the perspective of perspective of someone who might be watching this, who has social anxiety, being able to talk or talking to people and just connecting with people, man, it bring it brings me so much joy. It just feels good every time I do this. Every time I do these IG lives, which is another uncomfortable challenge for me, is I've just been trying to get IG lives going a lot more now with just uh, you know people like Diesel, and I have a few more lined up. So stay tuned, but. Uh, and just having those going where we just have like these open conversations over live camera, like this is a baby step challenge for me. Like it may uh, from the surface, like it's a little uncomfortable, but that's, that's why I do it because I want to go a little bit outside my comfort zone. Like every day, I just want to take a little step further and keep going a little further. Cause I mean, that's the only way that you get growth is to keep stepping outside. So that's why I just really like preach baby steps all the time. And I, I love what you've been uh, sharing with us on, you know, stay how to stay calm using the breasts, the yoga, and the tai chi, weird. and just keep up the schedule. Weird. I thought it used to be weird, like when I first down, like, oh my god, this is different. But then, like, I started noticing, like, my, like, everything would change, like, my everything. I, I was living in New York, and I was in like a area where uh, Asian people lived at, and uh, they were doing tai chi outside, and I was like, wow, it's so cool to see the culture like and I had a chance to like see like what they did so it's awesome it's awesome all right uncomfortable challenge for myself gonna youtube a tai chi this week hold me to it hold me to yeah. it you follow up with me on friday see if i've done it <laughs> uh, yeah i will i'm gonna send you uh someone i've worked with someone you haven't worked with i have sorry oh for for tai chi yeah it's on youtube Oh, okay, sweet. Yeah, that'll make it easier on me. <laughs> Send it to you. Okay. Let's see. I'm just trying to read these comments, see if there's any questions or anything. It's about vibrations and energy. Love it. Well, does Instagram not show you if people how many people are on anymore? I don't know. I don't even see. Uh, I think four or five people. Oh well, if anybody has any questions, yeah, shoot them over our way. And then people were down to answer. It was more at one point. It was more, but yeah, um, that I saw up there. Yeah, we coming to the close. That's all right. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, if anybody has any questions, shoot them our way. Uh, Diesel, love chatting with you, man. Love yeah. talking to you. Any more questions? Uh, Whatever you want, man. Yeah, I definitely want to stay in contact. And Diesel, how long do you meditate? Oh, good question. Good question. When I first started, I only meditated for like, because it was different. Like, I'm like, how do I like calm it down? You know, like, how do I calm? Uh, so I just started with a guided meditation, you know, like for five minutes. And then there's some apps that you can use called Headspace and uh, Calm. Um, that's the two that I, I didn't really use those two. I used Headspace because uh, I did an event for Headspace when they came to Pittsburgh. Uh, I was one of the influencers there and ambassadors. So I had a chance to meet the team and ownership and I got a chance to like get familiar with the meditation thing. So when COVID hit, I was already meditating right before that. I started meditating and learning like how to meditate. So I would just start with a guided meditation. Try for one or two minutes. Just do that repeatedly. Don't try to be 20-minute guru here and all that. Try to be something that we you didn't work to be yet. Just take your time. Start with the easy basics. Start with like a one to three-minute meditation, guided meditation. 
and do it every day. And then when you come to that point where you can increase the time limit when you're used to it, then you can do 20 minutes like, like that. Yeah, and I love Headspace. I think that's the best. If you've never meditated before, I think Headspace is definitely the best one to start. I think they have an awesome guided meditation 10-day course to begin with that yeah. I used. It was awesome. And I met the guy and the girl that does the voiceovers for them. I, like I told you, I met them in person. It was an honor to, to work with them and to pick their brain on meditation. And, you know, they're from, I think, England, I believe, if I'm right. Uh, I got a picture of him. I, I can send it to you. I just have to find it. But uh, that's who that's who like it really inspired me to do meditation was when I did that event as an influencer at Headspace and to see like oh hey I like this I really like it. Yeah, that's awesome. I think and since we're just on meditation right now, um, for anybody watching that's wanting to try meditation. Don't make the same mistake that I did and probably lots of other people do, which is think that you're not supposed to have thoughts at all. <laughs> totally well, normal to have thoughts. You're definitely going to have thoughts. <laughs> what? Yeah, and it's all just, it's all, that, that's what it's all about, honestly, is just bringing awareness to the thoughts and seeing them. It's like, oh, I see you thought, I'm like, that's cool. And then you just go on to the next one. It's like watching a cloud in the sky. Exactly. And, you know, like you said, Kyle, earlier, uh, just taking baby steps, you know, like I believe in baby steps and uh, not looking at the entire mountain, you know, just focus on each day, each day, each day, each day. And by the time you get to that goal, it might take three months, three years or a year or whatever, how long um, you'll be at the top of that mountain one day looking down. Like, oh, I'm glad I did that. It made me a stronger person. It made me a more wiser person. It made me more grateful person as well. Nice. Love it. Yeah, absolutely. Can't reach the mountain in a day. So to conclude diesel, what would be, well, well, I'm, I'm just coming up with a question off the top of my head. So I'm going to ask you a really curious one. Let's what's the most impactful or most interesting thing that you've learned in the past year? Wow. What have I learned in this last year? Um, so many, bro. But the most impactful one is to get your financial information together. Make sure that your business uh, is running, you know, right. Can, you know, like make sure you're on top of like your business and your personal. That's something I'm learning. Like that was hard for me. Like when I first started out doing business, it was hard for me to like, uh, what goes here, what goes there. Is this different? This is a business expense, you know? So I hired a team uh, called Bench. I'm not sure if you guys heard of them. They do a lot of bookkeeping and taxing for business. If you guys want to know, I'll send you uh, the link for that. We can uh, get, you get a discount, you know, through my code. Uh, and I'm not promoting them, by the way. They have never paid me to promote. Uh, so I'm not just promoting them, but I'm promoting their services. They're really good on helping you, you know, uh, the differences between, um, your bookkeeping and what's expense, what's not expense, uh, what you need to put here, what's a personal expense, all that. Uh, they have constant uh, bookkeeping staff to help you get, you know, back month and backlogging of everything. They go through all that and help you, you know, get on top of your books and they file your taxes for you. And then just working with a company called Gusto as well. Uh, they do all your payroll, like contract work with people that you work with or your employees. So just like getting on top of my financial you know, business thing is like something I learned this year. Nice. Uh, uh, that's awesome. And I'm going to reach out to you after this so you can help me with that. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to get on it because it's important, bro. I wouldn't tell you this stuff if it wasn't. It costs a little bit of money, uh, but it's going to save you a lot of time. Yeah. 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 Dealing with the separation between business and personal. Yeah, that's something that I need work in. So, boom, I'm hitting you up. <laughs> <laughs> but bro, it's tough. It's not easy, you know. Like a lot, of, a lot of people like on here don't even talk about, you know, a lot of entrepreneurs. They just talk about all their success. They don't talk about like, you know, going through 
you know, this process, like being organized and being disciplined, being structured and having a financial backing and having, you know, bookkeeping and being, you know, your taxes and all those different things. Uh, this is very important information. Yeah, 100%. Well, thank you, Diesel, for coming on. Um, yeah, pretty much at the end here. Um, yeah, like I said, thanks for coming on, doing this IG Live, you know, being vulnerable, talking about social anxiety, anxiety that you face and how you deal with it. So I, I know for my audience it's been very helpful, especially to come from a, a different perspective than, you know, wh what where I come from. So I, I love getting that with just, you know, where just different people talking about it and the different things that they do, like Tai Chi, like you're talking about, that's cool. And I'm definitely going to try that. Hopefully that hopefully you and I have inspired some people to try some Tai Chi. Somebody do Tai Chi with me. Right. And yoga too. Like Tai Chi, I don't do all the, every day. That's more of sure. a two, three days a week. Uh, but yeah. yoga every day. Yoga and meditation is every day. Every day in, in my household. <laughs> nice. Nice. Next time I'm in Ohio, we're gonna do uh, we're gonna do yoga together. Maybe Tai Chi too. Come to my office, bro. Yeah, we would, we would love to, you know, have you here. <laughs> and you know, you see how it is in Youngstown, Ohio. Let's do it. Well, all right. Thank you, everybody, for joining. Thank you, Diesel, for coming. And we will see you all another time. Yeah. Thank you for having me. Uh, thank you for everyone that came in. And um, you know, hopefully, we inspired you. So thanks, Kyle, for having me on. Absolutely.